In April 2018, I was invited to a panel about cognitive management versus privacy in a cyber world, collision or opportunity. The panel took place at the occasion of the IEEE Fib Network Operations and Management Symposium, which happened in Taipei, Taiwan. The panel was organized by my friend Alexander Klem from Hawaii. The other panelists besides me were Padma Pillai Asno from Huawei, Jerome Francois from Indian OC, and Feng Lin from National Taiwan University. At the bottom you see an actual picture from the panel that I took from the stage, and even though it looks empty, more than 40 participants were in the audience. We had a lively discussion and it was one of the most attended panels of the entire conference. So each of us had a different topic related to cognitive management and privacy. And as you might guess already, my topic was, of course, the Internet of Things and privacy. So what do I consider privacy? Well, basically two things. So first, the ability of knowing which data is related to me as a person, is used where, by whom, to what purpose. And second, the ability of deciding which data is related to me as a person is used where, by whom, to what purpose. So it's about knowing and deciding what happens with data related to me. You may ask, what does the IoT have to do with privacy? Well, when preparing for my keynote, I found the following comic. And the guy on the left says, thanks to the IoT, objects like smartphones can share your data without your intervention. And the guy in the middle says, I was suspecting that, while the smartphones at the bottom right are laughing. And so this exactly shows what happens with the IoT, namely we bring smart devices in our environments and to provide their services they have to monitor, so they have to collect data about us and once the data are monitored the devices can copy them as its digital data and distribute it to different other services and it's quite unclear who gets the data for which purpose. Okay, but more about that in some minutes. From that slide I switched to an event that just happened several days before the conference and it was the Facebook hearing at the Senate and Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, was asked there, would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? And uh, he was like, mm, no. So he was not comfortable with that and well, so Facebook is not our domain but the IoT is our domain and the interesting question is regarding this data collection and sharing, do we have a choice? So you may argue with Facebook you have the choice, you can just not use it but as we'll see with the IoT this is much more difficult because the IoT is in the ambience and you typically do not know if you're getting monitored at the moment or not and by which devices you're getting monitored and therefore it's much more difficult to make choices because you do not have to open the app and with Facebook we already had the discussion like okay what is with these shadow profiles that they have when they track users even though they're not part of the network well still people have to be on the internet and go to pages that are somehow related to Facebook for instance, by showing ads with the physical environments, this is more subtle because it's, it's just there, it's in the ambience. But first things first, so what is the IoT? So to me, the IoT is providing personalized services by implementing management of things that connect cyber and physicality. So I put the most important terms bold here, so it's personalized services the task that these services do is management of things. So the conference that was giving the keynote was about managing things. So managing network elements typically or mobile equipment. And with the IoT, the things to be managed become the actual smart things. So the smart devices. 
and it's connecting the cyber and the physicality. So that means that we have not only software, but the sensing and acting of these software components goes into our physical environment, so it goes into the ambience. And the typical setup that we find for the IoT is that we have distributed connected devices, and on these devices we have software running. So I symbolize it here with the micro S for microservices that are providing certain functionality. For instance, providing personalized services by managing these different things. And the attack vector, of course, are the services. So let's have a look at the today's deployment of the Internet of Things. So first of all, we have user aware monitoring. So these are devices where you explicitly interact with. So on the top left, for instance, you have the choice if you want to go to the desk or if you want to do a mobile check-in. And of course you can do so, but then you're also aware of that you're using this service. Same for Disneyland at the bottom. Sometimes you are aware of it, but you don't have a choice, for instance, with the fingerprint self-collection area at the airport. And there's already lots of data, so-called context data collected. For instance, who is there, with whom, when, and where. So let's continue our journey. So let's assume we go to the hotel and there we have lots of IoT devices most likely. And here it becomes unclear if we're aware of the monitoring or if we are not because the devices are just in the ambience. And even if we're aware or not aware, there are still lots of data collected. So here some more info was added like preferences and also personal, very personal things like my weight or other things could be collected. And it's not only in private spaces like this room here or my home where I bring my own devices, but it's also in professional environments. So it's also at work. And it's also not only by other people having installed some devices, but you also have sensors that are carried around by other people that are still measuring about you. So for instance, your smartphones. So you can not only monitor, get monitored through your own devices or the devices that are installed fixed, but also by moving devices that come with people that you know, for instance. And then of course you get even more information about your personality, your friends, your likes, your look, and so on. So what does that mean now? So with the Facebook, you might have seen this data octopus, data cracky thing, collecting all your data. And with the IoT, I want to draw a similar picture here. But the big difference to me is that the IoT is collect, potentially collecting much, much more data than Facebook is doing because you have many, many more sensors than you have people on this planet, and the number is definitely growing. So now we have this data octopus collecting all the data, and the panel is about cognitive management and privacy, and of course the biggest potential does not come with having the data, but with actually adding AI, artificial intelligence, so cognitive processes that do data mining and do something with this actual data. And once you bring this brain in, and this is what we're currently doing, the computer gets a much, much better picture of you. And to cite a phone that I often bring when I talk about this and I often show to my students, so here, picture of the 1999 movie Matrix and so here you see something like software with the zeros and ones and the figure here is the nail he's made out of it. And what I want to show here is simply that with this cognitive management, with this AI, the machine gets a very, very good picture of us. So it's really detailed. All right, so let's summarize. The IoT has certain characteristics. So it's ambient, so it's in our ambience and its applications are inherently personalized because it's exactly what we want to have. And regarding data, the AOT is collecting lots of data and this data is again inherently personalized. So the IoT 
is an ambient thing and it offers personalized services. And as I show here, there is no exit or return, so we cannot stop it. So the IoT will continue because this promises progression. And being here, I want to make the point that the IoT is actually like Facebook. But it's even worse because it's not only in the cyber, but it's also in our physical world. So we have human to machine to machine to human. And what is it like on Facebook, just in software, in the computer, might actually become a real like with the robot touching you in the future. To spin this analogy a little bit further, this so let's call it IoT book will have and already has bigger data than Facebook and this data is also much better verified because it's not introduced by humans but it's introduced and measured by machines and on the right we see the, the picture and uh, this shows how many devices we have and there we see that already in 2008 the number of these sensors that were installed was higher than the population of the world. And to make my point here, so data is the fuel, yes, but the engine is data analytics. So having the data is not the bad thing. So if Facebook would store the data, this would not be the problematic thing. The problematic thing is doing something with the data. So evaluating it and analyzing it and then doing things with it, like manipulating people to say it in a negative way and these data analytics with using cognitive management so using artificial intelligence this provides many horsepowers to stay in this analogy so it's a very strong engine for doing something with this data fuel and so from here I want to make a short deviation to, to make my point really clear so currently with the IoT and so we are the ones implementing the IoT from a technical perspective at the moment. We're creating something big. So Facebook was something big already, but the IoT is much bigger. And so let's have a look at what people said retrospectively when they created something massive. And so here we have Robert Oppenheimer. He was one of the brains behind the atomic bomb, behind the A-bomb. And retrospectively, he said... We knew the world would not be the same. A few people laughed, a few people cried, most people were silent. And using this quote, I want to show you this data octopus again with the artificial intelligence. And this time it's not Robert Oppenheimer, but this time it's us. And I tell you that I would like that we are not silent, but that we act, and that we act now. So, who is actually in charge for protecting my privacy? So, certainly it's the policy makers. So, society has to decide which privacy rules it wants. And the form of implementing these society-given rules are policies. Yes, so policies, policy makers have to act. But we as technology builders, we have to provide the technical means to enable and ensure the proper implementations of the people's will of these policies. So we are the ones providing the tools and we have to make sure that the tools do the right things. But then when the society decides through policies what it wants to have, it's ensured that this is actually happening. So fundamental challenges for providing privacy in the IoT to me are that the IoT is at the edge between network management, which provides fundamental management methodologies, and ways of computing, which provides the application. And so the question is, who is responsible there? Another question is, what data, so what context data, so data about our ambience, should be stored? How should we store this data? Where should we store the data? How should we process the data? Where should we process the data? How should we discover this data? 
and how should we transfer the data? And let me make some suggestions on possible answers. And this was, of course, questions that I was putting there to also stimulate the audience so that we could have a discussion afterwards. So possible solutions I was giving. So who's responsible? So of course we are responsible. And what context data to store? Well, as little as possible. But the problem is, the little will actually be big as many applications coexist on the same systems. So with that, I mean, when you have an IoT environment and you install different apps that do different things, then all these apps might need different information. But putting all this information together into the system, it becomes more and more valuable. And so each isolated service might be not so harmful, but having the things together, this has a big potential, a big risk. How to store the data? Well, of course, encrypted is a good option because it might prevent some misuse. But the problem here when you look at the IoT is that the IoT is resource constrained. Where to store the data? Well, locally is a good option. So edge-based systems or systems where everything is local are good. But of course, we have resource constraints. This might then put the need to also push something to the cloud. How to process the data? Well, securely is again a good option. And techniques like secure multi-party computation might be of help there in the future. But again, we have resource constraints. And also process the data responsibly. So when we implement artificial intelligence tools, we have to take care of the responsibilities that we have as the ones providing the technology. Where to process the data? Well, in trusted environments. So, for instance, locally at the edge or in trusted computing platforms. But again, we have resource constraints which might not result in having those platforms locally. How to discover data? Well, securely is a good idea and also sparsely. So I should only get to know what I really need to know. And how to transfer? Well, again, encryption is good. Security, also access control, things like that. So the IoT is highly dynamic. So which services of whom run when? This is something permanently changing and something also permanently changing the access patterns because we install a new software, so we want to give new permissions. Then we remove one, so we have to change the access patterns and so on. So there's lots of complexity. And therefore, what we need is we need security as core feature of the IoT. So we need something that is called security by design. So it must be inevitable security. So security that cannot be circumvented because otherwise it's useless because it's so complex, the environment, that people will find circumventions for it. Therefore, we as technicians have to implement it directly in the core. So how do we make the IoT privacy preserving? Well, first thing, what I also try to do in this talk is we have to raise awareness of the need. So the IoT is a massive thing. Think again about this Facebook comparison, only it will have more data, better verified data. Second thing, we have to provide security by design. This especially also includes having autonomous security mechanisms. So security that is self-managing, that is taking care of the complexity and that is ideally verifiable so that you can ensure that the security properties are indeed met. Next thing, transparency, transparency, transparency. The systems must offer information on which data is provided where, by whom, to what purpose, because only then people are aware of what happens. And we're talking about software systems. So this is nothing that we see. This is something that happens in our ambience. So we need to provide transparency. And having this transparency, then we need things that enable us to decide about our data. So first of all, we have to be aware and only then we can decide about what happens. Next thing, usability, usability, usability. Here at the conference, we typically had lots of technical experts, but the users in actual ambiences are most likely not all experts, like with this solid norms background people that were sitting in my panel there. 
And this is why it's very, very important to provide user interfaces that people can understand so that they can take responsible, deliberate decisions. And keep in mind, it's there. We are building it. And so two things I'm personally working on at the moment is first, inevitable fine granular access control with human in blue so that you can set which service can access which of your data and second cognitive firewalls again with humans in the loop so systems that are constantly monitoring which services are accessing which other services which data informing the user and making the user decide about what access she wants to permit or prevent Here's a summary of my slides. Key message, we are building the technology and this technology has to provide security by design so that our technology can implement the policies made by society. Thanks for watching.